Did you something break down? Yes, sir. Yeah, so you guys just came from over the park, right? Yeah, we just hanging out. That's it? Is this your car? I just told you my car was in the shop, officer. Law enforcement isn't always what it seems. Sometimes the very hands sworn to protect and serve end up crossing the line. What started as a simple car repair at a church in Huntsville, Alabama, quickly turned into a serious confrontation. A security guard's call to 911 brought Officer Krista McCabe to the scene. What happened next, captured on body cam, has now led to a lawsuit. Now, let's check into it. It's June 10th, 2019 in Huntsville, Alabama. Our main guy, Roland Edger, is heading over to the Progressive Union Missionary Baptist Church. Why? Well, he's off to help out a long-term client whose car decided to break down in the church parking lot. Now, this client is a dedicated teacher at the church. Roland takes a look at the car around 2 p.m. and realizes he needs more tools to get the job done right. So, like any diligent mechanic, he promises to return later. Fast forward to the evening and Roland is back. But this time, he's got a stepson, Justin Newby, in tow. They're ready to tackle the car repair and get the teacher back on the road. Now, the security guard sees them working on the car. Seeing Roland and Justin working on the car, the guard gets a bit suspicious and decides to call 911. He reports that two men are messing with an employee's car. About half an hour later, Officer Krista B. McCabe from the Huntsville Police Department arrives on the scene. And this is where things start to get interesting. The interaction between Roland, Justin, and Officer McCabe was all captured on her body camera. At first, it seems like a routine check. Officer McCabe approaches them, likely thinking she's about to deal with some car thieves. But Roland explains the situation telling her that he's there to fix the car for his client, the teacher. You'd think that would clear things up, right? But no, the situation starts to escalate. Officer McCabe, perhaps skeptical or just following protocol, decides to dig deeper. She asks for identification and more details. Roland and Justin comply, trying to show they're just there for a simple repair job. But the atmosphere gets tense. Officer McCabe isn't satisfied with their explanations and starts to press harder. This is where the story takes a turn. Now, check this out. ...of the Huntsville Police Department arrived, and the interaction that followed was captured on body camera. How are you doing? Good. How are y'all doing? How are you doing? What are y'all doing? Something like a description. Huh? What are y'all doing? Get in the car. Is this your car? Three three a drive off tag. Uh, one, of one, eight, six, one of your customers? Yeah. I was over here earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Whose car is that? That's mine. The black one? Yeah. All right, take a break from me real fast, and y'all have driver's license or IDs on you? I ain't gonna submit to no ID. Listen, you call this lady right now. Listen, I ain't got time for this. I'm all worried. I don't mean to be meat rude. Okay, nothing. no, you, I don't mean you to do need to give me your ID no, or driver's license. Listen, I don't want you to run run me in and it, uh, for, for nothing. Are you refusing me to give Are you refusing I'm, to give me your ID or driver's license? I'm telling you, if you license. call this lady on her own, on this Step car. over that one. Come on, man. See, y'all, see, here's y'all playing. You're playing right now. No, we, we, we don't got time for this. We really Despite Roland's attempts to clarify, Officer McKay becomes increasingly confrontational. Maybe she's having a bad day, or perhaps she's just being extra cautious. Whatever the reason, she demands that Mr. Edger provide his driver's license. Roland, feeling the situation is unfair, refuses. At this point, Officer Cameron Perillat steps in and handcuffs him. Imagine the frustration and confusion Roland and Justin must have felt. They came to help someone and now they're being treated like criminals. Now, let's get a bit legal for a moment. 
According to the Supreme Court's 1991 ruling in Florida v. Bostick, police officers have quite a bit of leeway when it comes to questioning individuals. The court explained that officers don't necessarily need to suspect someone of criminal activity to ask them questions or even request identification. That's right, as long as the cops aren't making it seem like you have to comply, they're pretty much in the clear. Now, think back to our story. Officer McCabe demanded Roland's driver's license. This might seem straightforward, but here's the twist. How it's demanded matters. If the officer made Roland feel like he had no choice but to comply, that's a different game. Roland's refusal to show his license turned the situation from a friendly request to a tense standoff. Remember, the whole scene was caught on the body camera. Officer McCabe's tone, body language, and the way she presented her demands are all crucial. Did she politely ask, or was it more of a barked order? That's what the court had to consider. If it seemed like Roland was being forced to comply, his rights might have been violated. While officers have the leeway to ask for identification and ask questions, there's a crucial flip side to this. According to the Supreme Court's 1983 ruling in Florida v. Royer, an individual who is approached by police doesn't have to answer any questions. They can simply walk away if they choose, as long as the police don't have reasonable grounds to detain them. This means that just refusing to answer questions or show identification isn't enough reason for officers to hold someone. So let's tie this back to our story. According to Florida v. Royer, Roland had every right to refuse to show his license and to decline to answer her questions. He could have walked away right then and there unless McCabe had specific, reasonable grounds to detain him. This ruling shows that citizens aren't obligated to comply with police requests if there's no legal basis for detention. Think about what this means for Roland. When he refused to provide his driver's license, he was exercising his rights as laid out by the Supreme Court. Officer McCabe's reaction to handcuffing him raises a big question. Did she have reasonable grounds to believe Roland was involved in criminal activity? If not, her actions could be seen as a violation of his rights. Also, even though the Constitution doesn't explicitly require individuals to identify themselves to law enforcement, the Supreme Court clarified this issue in the 2004 case of Hebel v. Sixth, Judicial District Court of Nevada. In this landmark ruling, the court held that while the Constitution itself doesn't mandate identification, state laws can require individuals to disclose their name during a valid Terry stop. Terry stops, by the way, in those brief detentions where officers have reasonable suspicion that someone is involved in criminal activity. The court argued that such state laws are in line with the Fourth Amendment, which protects against unreasonable searches and seizures. So, if an officer has a valid reason to detain you, like suspicion of criminal activity, you might be legally obligated to give your name. It's similar to a legal dance, where the rights of individuals and the powers of law enforcement intertwine within the boundaries established by the Constitution. Alabama's Stop and Identify Law, found in Section 15530 of the Alabama Code, grants law enforcement officers the authority to stop any person in a public place, whom they reasonably suspect of committing, having committed, or about to commit a felony or other public offense. They are permitted to demand the individual's name, address, and an explanation of their actions. That means that even if the officers had reasonable suspicion to believe that Mr. Edger was engaged in criminal conduct, Alabama's stop and identify law explicitly limits what officers can demand from a suspect to their name, address, and an explanation of their actions. So Officer McCabe went beyond that by demanding Mr. Edger's driver's license. You don't understand the law. I do, I do. I got three officers, three officers in the office. Oh. I'm three six seven. Y'all know. Y'all know. Turn it the other way. 
the person my right my my, my, my left arm up there. Man. I'm here to twist my left when I asked you, sir. All right, I'm going to do your cuff. Yeah, and you twist yes, your wrist yes, around. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you my ID. I have my phone. Hey, man. Will you go stand in front of my car for me? ID. ID. Hold on. Give me my ID, man. No. We'll get your ID. Keep the wrist like that. All right. All right. They're good. They're good now. Yep. Nope. Look. They're good right now. They're not too tight. Okay. You're under arrest for, for obstruction. I didn't do nothing. All right. So if you resist any further, you will also get charged with resisting arrest. Listen, you understand? Listen, I give my ID. I'll tell you okay. what's going on. This is ridiculous. I'm trying to get a customer's car here. I'm in a rush. They, my shop's unlocked over on Governor's Drive right now. Officer Gabe tells Mr. Edger that he's being arrested for obstruction. In Alabama, Obstructing governmental operations means intentionally hindering the administration of the law or other governmental functions through intimidation, physical force, interference, or any other unlawful act. In the 2023 case of Jennings v. Smith, the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Alabama ruled that an individual's refusal to identify themselves when officers have reasonable suspicion to believe they may be committing a crime can be considered an independently unlawful act, violating the obstruction statute. However, as previously discussed, Alabama's stop and identify statute doesn't mandate citizens to provide physical identification, which is the sole request made by the officers before arresting Mr. Edger. Additionally, although officers can ask for driver's licenses during traffic stops, Alabama law doesn't mandate Mr. Edger to present his driver's license in this instance, even if the officers had reasonable suspicion to detain him. So, it's pretty unlikely that a court would think the officers had a good enough reason to arrest Mr. Edger for obstruction or anything else, really. ...that the officers had probable cause or even arguable probable cause to arrest Mr. Edger for obstruction or any other offense. Do you want my ID? Where's your ID? It's in the car, I'm sure. I thought it was in my pocket. You're all down in my pocket for no reason. I, I said my ID is, either, is in my car. Go over and walk in and get my car. Okay, well, he's car. still going right to check there. your pocket because I don't know what's in there, all right? Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get placed in my car without knowing what's in your pocket. You shut up. Is that how you talk to someone? Is that all officer supposed to talk to someone? Yeah, like this? we're here doing a custodial I, I, search on you. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. What y'all need to do is call Ms. Noel Patel right there in this office right here and hand me the key. That's I what already you need to explained do. to you. All right. Uh, man, I am such a rush. How long has it been, man? I've been trying to get over and get this call back. And then here, there, there it is. Okay. Look at it. 38.1 That's it, that's it right there. Is Now, the officer searched Mr. Edger's pockets before placing him in the police cruiser. In the 1973 case of United States v. Robinson, the Supreme Court said it's okay for cops to do a full search of a person without a warrant if they're being arrested. So, searching Mr. Edger's pockets before they put him in the back of the police car was within their rights, according to the law. While making the decision, the court highlighted that when someone's lawfully arrested based on probable cause, it's considered a reasonable intrusion under the Fourth Amendment. So, a search as part of the arrest doesn't need any extra justification. But it's crucial to remember that this exception to the warrant requirement for searches hinges on the arrest being constitutionally lawful. If there are any doubts about the legality of the arrest, or if it's not based on probable cause, then any evidence gathered during the search could be subject to suppression. It's like a safeguard ensuring that constitutional rights aren't trampled upon in cases where arrests are questionable. Therefore, it's likely that a court would find that because the officers didn't have probable cause to arrest Mr. Edger, their search of his person violated the Fourth Amendment. It just goes to show the significance of sticking to constitutional rules, particularly when law enforcement actions are under the microscope for their legality. It's like necessary. It is necessary. It's called what? obstruction. I listen, I didn't do anything. 
I, listen, yeah, please, yeah. please yeah. listen, please he listen. I've please. already told him that he's under arrest. This is ridiculous, man. You know what I'm saying? She, she, hey, look at her. I didn't do it according, but she's trying to arrest somebody for not doing a crime. She's trying to arrest me for obstruction. For what? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Huh? That's what I'm saying. She's down. I, listen, please, down. please listen. Sit down. Well, that's what I'm saying, man. I got my shop unlocked over there. I'm trying to confide. Man, please listen Sit to me. Sit down. Man, this is... Please listen. No, you don't want to listen to us. I'm so trying to explain to, to you. To I'm, sir. I'm, I'm trying to explain. Stay. Okay, once again, uh, just have a seat right there for me, okay? Yeah, I'm not under you that, have huh? no. I can use your ID. Thank you. Okay. So, all right, he he is going to jail. All right. Yes. Okay. Well, that that sucks. I mean, good people go to jail too. Good people, bad people. If they break the law, they break the law. They go to jail. All right. I asked him multiple times for his ID or driver's license, but I know not. Yep. Okay. Then he refused. I asked him again if he was sure that he was refusing to give it to me. He confirmed that he was refusing to give it to me, and at that point, he is obstructing an investigation, and he is going to jail. All right? I'm out here because I got a call stating that that vehicle, okay, is an employee here, and you guys were inside the car, and you're not supposed to be inside the car. Okay? And that's fine. All right? But I'm still here making sure that you're not doing anything illegal. But it took me now, how long have I been out here? Like five, six, seven-ish minutes, okay? I'm just now getting to tell you why I'm here because of his actions, all right? I'm just now, I'm just now getting to explain what I'm investigating because he deterred me from doing that. That's his fault. He owns the body shop from Governor's uh, Fry, uh, Shelf auto collision. He owns that. I just, I've been with him. Look. Duck off. Okay. So, whose car is it that is an employee? It's Ms. Dola. She works here. Which at the car daycare. is it that's hers? After his arrest, Mr. Edger was charged with obstructing, but the city of Huntsville later dismissed the charge. On February 9th, 2020, Mr. Edger took legal action by filing a false arrest lawsuit against Officer McCabe, Officer Perillat, and the city of Huntsville in federal court. Despite the determination that the officers lacked actual probable cause to arrest Mr. Edger, the district court granted the officers qualified immunity and also dismissed his complaint. The court's reasoning was on the notion that the officers had arguable probable cause. As a reasonable, but mistaken officer might have viewed Mr. Edge's refusal to provide physical identification as a potential crime. Mr. Edger took his case further by appealing to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. In an opinion issued on September 26, 2023, the Court of Appeals reversed the district's court's decision. It determined that Officer McCabe and Officer Perellet were not entitled to qualified immunity. So, what the court basically said here is that for a long time before Mr. Edger's arrest, it was well known that the police could ask people questions, but people don't have to answer if they don't want to. And the law in this case is crystal clear. Cops can ask for someone's name, address, and why they're doing what they're doing. So, given all the facts and the legal history, it's pretty clear that no sensible officer would have thought there was a good reason to arrest Mr. Edger for obstructing the government's work. The Court of Appeals sent the case back to the district court to continue with the legal process. As of now, the lawsuit is still ongoing, and we are waiting for its final resolution. Officer McCabe and Officer Perillat seemed impatient and rude during the whole incident, pushing Mr. Edger to show his ID when he didn't have to. This ended up causing them trouble in court. Their attitude didn't help the situation at all, Arresting Mr. Edger without having any real reason to think he did something wrong just made things worse. It wasn't fair or right. The situation got out of hand super fast. Instead of calmly hearing Mr. Edger out, the officers wasted no time in slapping handcuffs on him. 
They arrested him just because he didn't hand over his driver's license. Even though, if you read the fine print of Alabama law, that's not exactly what it asks for in such situations. It's like they jumped the gun before understanding the whole story. The officers didn't listen to Mr. Edger when he tried to show his ID multiple times. Instead, they went ahead with the arrest, which seemed unfair. Ignoring his attempts to cooperate showed a lack of fairness and respect for his rights. It's important for police to follow the rules and treat everyone fairly. I would have been, I would have called him, I would have verified that you're supposed to be there with the car, and I would have said, y'all have a great night, all right? But there was no way that you wouldn't have reconsidered after that. No, time. sir. If I if we do that, I mean, uh, then would, everyone. Would, would you would you take a moment and just let me talk to you for a second here, though? I mean, we we're already at. This kind of behavior makes people lose trust in them. It's a reminder that police need to be accountable and always respect people's rights so everyone feels safe and treated fairly. Officer McCabe's frustration over the delay, which was caused by her wrongful arrest of Mr. Edger, shows what's known as a contempt of cop arrest. It shows how officers, driven by their egos, prioritize getting people to obey them over doing their job effectively. In this case, their insistence on getting Mr. Edger's ID led to a violation of his rights and hindered their ability to conduct a fair investigation. It's a reminder that police should focus on upholding the law while respecting people's rights rather than letting their egos get in the way. Mr. Edger's decision not to show his ID when he didn't have to was a bold move in protecting his rights. Even though he went along with the arrest, he spoke up against the officer's unfair actions. By taking the right steps to deal with his unjust arrest, Mr. Edger showed how important it is for everyone to know and defend their rights, especially when dealing with authority figures. While Mr. Edger eventually complied with the officer's unlawful demands for his driver's license, it's understandable why he initially resisted to avoid an unjust arrest. We should applaud Mr. Edger for his dedication to defending his constitutional rights and for taking his lawsuit all the way to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. It's really important for individuals to stand up for their rights, even when faced with challenging circumstances. Also, qualified immunity is a legal idea that's often used to protect cops from getting sued for things they do on the job. But in Mr. Edger's situation, Officer McCabe and Officer Paralat lost that protection. This shows that what they did wasn't okay under the Constitution. It's a reminder of how important it is to make sure cops are held responsible for their actions and that everyone's rights are respected. The situation shows why it's crucial to keep an eye on what cops do and make sure they're fair and transparent in their work. We hope the best for Mr. Edger as he moves forward with the lawsuit. And that wraps it up. Now, what do you think? Also, have you ever encountered such an unjust experience with law enforcement? Do drop your thoughts in the comments section below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video for more such videos. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss any of our videos. Also, make sure to share this video with your friends and family. And remember, staying informed is the first step towards a more just society. Until next time, stay safe and stay sane, and we'll be back with another one.